Hi everyone. Welcome back to Frappe School. This is the ninth chapter in our inventory management course. In this chapter, we will be discussing warehouse management. By the end of this chapter, you will be able to understand what are put away rules, what is a pick list, what is auto reorder, and how to set these in ERP Next. If you have multiple products stored in your warehouse, it might become difficult to decide where to store them and where to pick the items from. A put away rule defines a warehouse assignment strategy for the incoming stock. It takes warehouse capacity and priority into consideration. In order to define these rules, you should first decide the warehouse layout and decide which items should go in which location. You can decide the location based on different criteria. A pick list, on the other hand, helps you organize the picking of items from a warehouse where it is for order fulfillment or internal transfers. This is useful in case the volume of orders is high, inventory carried by the organization is high, or when there are too many SKUs that are involved. Picklist provides a list that mentions which items need to be picked from which location, simplifying the fulfillment process for pickers. Auto reorder helps you maintain optimum levels of inventory so that you do not have to block capital by overstocking or lose business due to understocking. Let us see how to use these warehouse management features in ERP Next. A put-away rule defines a warehouse assignment strategy for any incoming stock. It takes the warehouse's capacity and priority into consideration. This is useful for capacity management in large warehouses with multiple locations. We can use the awesome bar to navigate to the put-away rule list. Here, we can see any previously created rules and we can add a new one by clicking on the Add Put-away Rule button. First, we need to select the company and select the item. Next, we will need to define the warehouse for which this rule will be applicable. Now, we can set the capacity for this item in this particular warehouse. We can even add a unit of measurement if we want to set the capacity for the warehouse in a different UOM. If we add a new UOM, then the capacity in stock UOM field will be set automatically. Next, we can set the priority for this rule, 1 being the highest. So, we can set it like we want. Once we have added all our details, we can save this rule. Once we save, a disable checkbox will appear if we want to disable this rule in the future. Every rule is unique to each item warehouse combination. Let's see how the put away rule works. First, some prerequisites. We have a purchase order with a requirement of 100 pieces of item UPI 003. Next, we have two active put-away rules with a capacity of 600 pieces each. One has a higher priority than the other. Let's now open the purchase order and create a purchase receipt using the create button. Once the purchase receipt opens, we can select the apply put-away rule checkbox here. When we do that, we can see that the 100 units are split and assigned according to the rules mentioned. As we can see here, the first 10 pieces are added to the first warehouse and once the first one is full, the others are added to the next warehouse. Let's have a look at the Warehouse Capacity Summary Report. We can search for it using the awesome bar. 
This report shows us the capacities of all the warehouses and their respective stock levels. Only warehouses that have put away rules assigned to them will be shown in this report. The edit capacity button here lets us edit the put away rule capacity. In chapter 6, we understood the function of a pick list and how we can create a delivery note from it. Here, we will see how we can create a pick list from an existing sales order or a work order. First, let's create a pick list from a sales order. Let's go to the sales order list and open the sales order we want. Using the create button, we can select pick list. Only sales orders with a picked percentage less than 100 can be used to create a pick list. Once the pick list opens, we can see that all the data required is fetched from the sales order. Once the stock is picked, we can save and permanently submit this document. Further, we can also create a delivery note once submitted. To create a pick list from a work order, we can navigate to the work order list using the awesome bar and open the work order we want to use to create the pick list. Like we did in the sales order, we can use the create button and select pick list. Pick lists can only be created from work orders whose status is not started or in progress. Pick lists can't be created for completed work orders. Once the pick list opens, we can see that all the data required is fetched from the work order. We can see a dialog box asking for the quantity of finished goods. We need to add it here since it is necessary to calculate the amount of raw materials we require. Once we have added all the details and picked the stock, we can save and permanently submit this pick list. When the stock of an item dips under a certain quantity, you can set an automatic reorder under Auto Reorder section in the Item Master. Firstly, it should be enabled in Stock Settings. This will raise a material request for the item. The user with roles Purchase Manager and Stock Manager will be notified when the material request is created. Since we have enabled the settings, let's add the details in the item master. Select the item where we want to configure auto reordering and scroll down to the auto reorder section. Click on add row and fill in the following fields. Check in field will define which group warehouses we need to check for the quantity of the item. Request for field will let us know which warehouses to stock the item reorder. When this quantity is reached, the reorder will be triggered. Reorder level can be determined based on the lead time and the average daily consumption. For example, we can set the reorder level at 50. When only 50 units are remaining in stock, the system will either automatically create a material request in our ERP Next account. Reorder quantity defines the number of units to be reordered so that the sum of reordering cost and holding cost is at its minimum. The reorder quantity is based on the minimum order quantity specified by the supplier and many other factors. For example, if reorder level is 200 units, our reorder quantity may not necessarily be 200. The reorder quantity can be greater than or equal to the reorder level. It may depend upon lead time, discount, transportation and average daily consumption. The material request type with which the stock will be reordered depends on whether you buy the item, manufacture it yourself or transfer it between warehouses. The material request is created at 12 midnight depending on the set reorder level. 
A separate material request will be created for each item. User with Purchase Manager's role will receive email alert about these material requests. If auto creation of material request is failed, user with Purchase Manager role will be informed about the error message. This brings us to the end of the ninth chapter of our Inventory Management course. I hope this helped you understand how to manage your warehouse in an efficient way with ERP Next. You can learn more about ERP Next on docs.erpnext.com. In the next chapter, we will discuss reports and dashboard. Thank you.